seat and room for enough for four, maybe five, if small children are factored into the equation. We had a chance to play with the base ES model for a week. This came with something you don't see very much anymore, a five-speed manual. You do remember how to work a clutch, don't you? A CVT automatic is available if you're a shiftless driver or opt for the four-wheel drive transaxle. The interior features were pretty basic in terms of seat covers and fit and finish. We did notice there is some padding over the dashboard. It was enough to absorb road noise while not making it library quiet. Under the hood is a 2-liter aluminum 4-cylinder engine at 148 horsepower. This is not a performance platform, but it's pretty efficient, delivering 145 foot-pounds of torque. Electric power steering is more than adequate while saving the weight of a hydraulic system with no drag on the engine. One of our biggest gripes about Mitsubishi's in the past has been the buzz box feeling in the cabin on regular roads. Someone must have been listening because that has been addressed with this little piece of composite rubber which reduces a lot of the vibration from the tailgate. We did appreciate the cargo space of nearly 22 cubic feet with the second row seats in an upright position and 49 cubic feet of space with them folded down. Even with 18 inch wheels and tires, liftover point for the rear is easily accessible and the hip point for the driver and passengers is at a workable level. The Outlander Sport comes in two trim levels, ES and a premium package with an array of option packages that can run up the price. But if you're in the market for a low cost crossover with traction control, Bluetooth, good fuel economy and a reasonable set of warranties, then the Outlander Sport may be worth a good look. This is Greg Marks. We want to know what you think, so email us. The address is bumper to bumper TV at cs.com.